Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to Movement and Marketing, a new marketing series that looks at the actions, strategies, and tools companies and entrepreneurs can utilize to help them achieve their business goals. My name is Daniel Crane, and I am the Director of Programming at the Center for Creative Entrepreneurship, um, and we are excited to kind of launch this new series that focuses in marketing. Uh, in this episode, we will take a look at the value of platforms like Instagram and YouTube and their capabilities. Uh, this workshop will be led by Mian Vukovic, Senior Project Manager and Chief of Staff at Idea Booth. A little about Mian, he is a seasoned project manager in the advertising and marketing industry, working on projects across social media, content creation, website development, experiential marketing, and has worked with national clients across consumer packaged goods, cannabis, financial institutions, real estate, hospitality, and food service industries. In addition to his day job of marketing, Mian invests in and manages his own real estate portfolio. He's also a big believer in psychology of people and has spent over 500 hours in the last four years studying on topics such as clinical psychology, human behavior, and why we do the things we do. I'm really excited uh, to talk to him today, so let's bring him into the conversation. Hello, Mian. How are you doing? Hey, Daniel, I'm doing well. How are you? Great. You know, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to this presentation and just kind of reading your background. You know, you, you have a lot of experience with, uh, you know, different types of things in marketing and even the fact that you focus a lot on, uh, you know, human behavior and psychology. I'm sure those those things, um, you know, intertwine a lot. Um, can you just kind of give a, a, a little bit about just your current work and then we'll, we'll, we'll jump into the workshop? Yeah, definitely. So I currently work at Idea Booth. We are a digital marketing agency based in the West Loop of Chicago. We work with clients in a wide range of industries, everything from food service to uh, cannabis to financial institutions to real estate companies. And what we really do there is we build brands, whether you're a brand that needs to come into the modern digital age by creating content for social media channels that maybe your marketing team over the past 30 plus years hasn't been focusing on, or if you're a brand new brand and you have, you have nothing, you have an idea and you have a product or service that you're going to be launching and you come to us and you say, Hey, me on idea booth, we need help launching this brand. Um, where do we start? Idea booth is, is the go-to for, for building brands from scratch. So that's uh, at a very high level what we do there. Yeah, that's great. And, you know what? Before we get started, what got you into marketing? What, what why, why marketing? <clears throat> yeah, I, I think that you know when I was in college, it was you. You only had so many things to to choose from, and even, even I graduated in two thousand eleven, and during that time, social media was becoming a thing. I think Facebook started in the in the mid to late two mm thousands. -hmm. YouTube was around, but it wasn't really what it was now. So. We didn't have the understanding of what the different industries were, just like most people didn't. You know, only people in very recent history knew a lot of information about the majors they were going into and what their careers actually looked like. So, when I was in college, there weren't really too many options. You know, at first, I wanted to be an educator because I really liked working with kids, and I was a camp counselor, camp counselor all throughout high school and college, and I really enjoyed that. But then I, I started thinking, okay, maybe I need to do something that's a little bit more. Uh, wide in terms of the work that I'm, I'm doing. And then I started looking into business and somehow finance and accounting and things like that didn't really fit with, with, with a good mix of creativity and execution. It was, it was a lot more um, obviously numbers based and objective where marketing, I really felt like hit that, hit that base in terms of the people I was working with, the classes I were I was taking, the teachers I was connecting with, but even then taking marketing classes in college, it wasn't, it wasn't a one-to-one -one when, hey, this is what you taught, learned in school, and now you go into a marketing role, and, and you're doing exactly what you learned. Right. Marketing in and of itself is so so wide ranging in what you're doing. You can be doing research, you can be doing content creation, you can be you can be creating brands, you can be um, you can be specialized in in a lot of different areas of marketing. So I think it really just fit well with uh, my personality and and that I really enjoyed you know the teachers I was learning from at the time, and that's kind of what drove me into marketing. Yeah, and I, and I do have to say that you know just in our short uh, discussion and, and getting to know you, you know, marketing. Um, I, I think a lot of people think they know what marketing is, but you 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 get to understand what it is when you hear from a real marketer who's like doing the work, you know. Um, so yeah. I, I'm excited to to hear from you today. Let's let's bring in um, 
the the presentation and and let's just kind of you know <clears throat> you walk us through this and I'll I'll do the slides and we'll go from there. Yeah, so I you know what we're going to talk about today is content specifically for Instagram and YouTube and the reason I chose these two topics to talk about was because I think that they're the most important ones and the most powerful ones that we're seeing across marketing channels and there's a lot of good things that brands can do on these channels but it's it's not always so easy to do it especially on on YouTube you know Instagram is making it very easy to create content and to produce content for brands but it's it's very bite-sized content it's entertainment and it's kind of there and it's gone and you have to create more and you have to create more and to continue mm -hmm. continue doing it consistently YouTube things that you create on YouTube will stay there and can live there for a long time and can actually become a revenue source for, for brands or for individual content creators. So we'll dive into that in, in the more, more deeply, but I want to first just start with this question that we have on the screen here. You know, what is content? We hear this word a lot and, you know, everyone has heard Gary V, you know, are you, are you creating content? How much content <laughs> are you creating? But I actually opposite to, to usually when it's a word that's kind of ambiguous, this word is actually much bigger than what, how we use it. You know, when we, we, when we, when I specifically hear people talk about content, what they're usually referring to is what are you posting on Instagram? What are you mm -hmm. posting on, on Facebook? And that is content, but to really understand content and to be able to, to, to execute it well, you have to understand how big this word is because content is anything that it informs you or educates you or entertains you or distracts you. It, a, a radio ad is content and you can go to the next slide here. A, a Netflix show that is content. Game of Thrones is content. It's just content that that there was a whole production around it. There was a lot of money behind it, and it turned into X amount of seasons with eight to twelve episodes, sixty minutes each, mm -hmm. and people devoted time to consuming that content. Um, uh, anything, you, any sort of art can be content. Websites are content. Graphics, Instagram Reels are content. Videos on YouTube, designs are content. The logo is content. Everything is is content. It's such a big word, and I think that when you really start to think about content in that framework, it becomes much larger, and you're able to sort of categorize what sort of content you need to create for your brand when it comes to specifically mm -hmm. comes to, to marketing. So um, it's just it's just really important to kind of have that oversight of what content really means at a, at a high level. And I may be getting ahead of myself, but when organizing, you know, your content or what do you think about like what your audience is consuming um, the most of, and that's where you should focus or like in terms of organizing what con, you know, like here I have my images, I have my videos, I have my website, mm -hmm. you know, how, how, how do you approach kind of organ or how would you suggest approaching the, the, the organization of just your content in general? Yeah, that's a good question. Well, I think that the, the points that you brought up are definitely important as far as what is your audience consuming, but it also matters what is your budget? How much time mm -hmm. do you have to to create content? Is it is it your number one priority? Depending on what type of brand you are or if you're an individual content creator, how much time do you have to dedicate to creating content will de determine where what type of content you're going to be creating and again this presentation focuses on youtube and instagram because that's what's going to be most applicable you know not many people are going to go out and film a movie or a netflix right. show right. or do you know host a, a radio um show um because well primarily because this is what radio shows are turning into is these, these type of conversations that we're having now right um but but i, I do think that it's it, it just matters on what your budget is what your priority level is for creating marketing materials how much time you have all those things will depend on what type of content you're creating i mean i mean right now the content that is performing well across social media platforms is is, is video and video content can be can be depending on what type of video content you're doing it can be easy to do or it can be very challenging to do and that's kind of what i want to get into here i believe the next slide we have is is youtube so or youtube and instagram content so let's jump into these the first one i want to go over is youtube so youtube and i want to go over some of these basics because i've seen so many brands and, and people do it wrong youtube is, is primarily for lo longer form content and when i say longer form i mean longer than two minutes we, and some of this stuff might sound basic, but it's wide shot because it's primarily consumed on a desktop computer or on a TV. 
and it, and it's it's viewed wide, high resolution. You tend to see ongoing series on there. So brands will do episodes one, two, three, four, or bloggers will have consistent blogs going out there. It's not kind of just like a one-time thing that people then forget about. And it tend, content tends to skew to being more inf informative and educational. So people will spend time on YouTube. That's why it that's why you tend to see longer videos on YouTube because people will invest time when they're, when they're getting information that is informative and educational because that type of content tends to improve their lives, whether they're learning about how to do something in, in, in real estate or whether they're learning about psychology, whether they're learning how to make a change in Excel and it's a 10 minute video, they're learning something, it's informative, it's educational. And this isn't to say that there is no content on YouTube that is entertaining, there definitely is, but the content that that lives on for a long time and provides the most value and performs the best on YouTube is primarily informative and educational. And YouTube can be used in, in a lot of different in different ways. We brands on YouTube, it's not about creating a commercial and then posting it to your YouTube channel. YouTube is not for posting your commercials. If you want to run commercials on YouTube, you run ads before actual longer form videos. If you're just posting ads on YouTube, it's commercials within your YouTube profile. That's not going to do anything from your brand. What you need to do is actually create stories that are that incorporate your brand and that put put your brand within a larger experience that your consumers are experiencing and we'll get into that in a sec i have some examples in a few slides but one other thing to note about youtube is once you hit a thousand subscribers that's when you can start making money on youtube hmm. that is the point at which at which ads are that are run on your platform on, on your profile before your videos can start generating money for you now when you get to a thousand subscribers you're not suddenly financially free but <laughs> you know you still need you, you need you need many many more subscribers to really i would say have a income from from youtube right and and you know th that's something that brands are not all brands are even thinking of also it's very hard for brands to do that because not all brands are the international or even national brands some are just local and doesn't really make sense to them for them to work towards that thousand plus subscribers to start making money of it but there are large brands who who are investing in in creating content for youtube by having a team of videographers editors that are on salaried who they know once they get to over a thousand and and a thousand is just the, the benchmark i'm talking when right. once they start getting a few hundreds of thousands million subscribers every time they post a video on youtube that video starts generating income for them right so, and and the thing is with these videos they last forever because these videos are informative and educational they're not entertainment they're not one time things that people are going to watch mm. and and then forget about people will come back to it, it they'll share it around if it's if it's a really good piece of content and then every single time a view it happens and, and an ad is watched that brand gets money from it so that's uh th that like i said that works for larger brands that have the time that have the money that have the resources to put into creating content like that on YouTube. And it's not going to work for everybody, but, but that's, that's something important to know. And yeah. Yeah. I have, you know, two things that you kind of popped out to me was one, just the way that YouTube is consumed. Right. So oh. when people think about putting on content, YouTube desktop or, you know, TV, it's, this is not typically, you know, used uh, with, with your mobile device, which makes a huge difference when thinking about, you know, who your, who your audience is. I also was thinking about how, you know, all these fix it videos of like when something breaks in the house and, you know, or, or even how to tie a bow tie, yep. like, you know, like that guy, the British guy who talks about creating the fish and the bow tie. I mean, it's, I think it has like 10 million views or something like that. Yeah. You know? Um, yeah, it's 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 really it's really incredible, and it's such a powerful tool on on so many different levels. I mean, that we're we're just talking monetization right. in, in that in that sense, and you know what you talked about, where it's how it's consumed on desktop and and TV. You know, a lot of people have YouTube on their TV now when right. they're just switching through their different apps on there. Or you can go to YouTube, and again, that goes back to because it's consumed in long form. People will sit down and watch YouTube on on their TV or on their computers. And when you're watching something for longer, you want to see it in its best form, and that's why we watch it in wide versus what we'll get to in a few slides. Instagram, it's just very, 
it's becoming like TikTok, just very mm-hmm. bite-sized content, next, next, next. Oh, that's great, next, like it, next. And it, it, it's not as captivating, so it requires a lot of content as opposed to fewer content by, but higher quality, which is what you see on YouTube. So if you, if you go on to the next slide here, just some production notes on YouTube, and a lot of these we, we talked about, but production quality, high. You want to get a high resolution video. You want to have a good story. You want to have good visuals on there. You, you, for this, you'll probably need camera equipment, videographer, editor, lighting, all these things. You you want to do multiple videos. It's not just going to be a one and one and done type thing. And then I put on their production costs, medium to high. It's very hard to consider what is medium to high because five thousand to forty thousand might be very low for someone who's creating a, a very very high end. But I I put that those numbers in there regarding uh, as it relates to the clients that we work with. When right. it comes and to our, our, our audience too. I mean, these are entrepreneurs, right? Yeah. So these are also startup businesses, which that, 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 that range is about right. Yeah. So, and, and even that is a, a wide range, you know, the mm-hmm. $5,000 video is going to be very different from a, from a $40,000 video that, that lives on YouTube. And, and we'll get into some, some examples, but I think that overall the, the message for YouTube is it doesn't make sense for everybody. But if if you are going to do it, make sure you do it, you do it right, and you're creating content that is is higher quality, that's more educational and informative, and it is is not just ads about your product that you put on YouTube because that is is just going to be not worth your time, and it's really just going to not look bad for your brand like you guys don't really know what, what you're doing and again that that's whether you are a brand or you are an individual content creator because obviously individual content creators are very abundant right now and so many people are working out their personal brands and and becoming thought leaders and using that to generate income through youtube mm-hmm. <laughs> so i believe the next slide we have some examples right or this, this is or oh, this is just a summary so Brands can use YouTube to tell stories that are relevant to their audience experience. The primary purpose is not to promote a product. You need to tell the story about the larger experience. So let's get into some examples. I think it'll be good to see these. So, and I believe we can probably link to some of these in, in the show notes if people want to want to see them. But Liverpool FC, this is a, a global global brand, uh, one of the biggest soccer clubs in the world, based out of Liverpool, England, and what they did. A couple of years ago, was they they started just filming the experience of going to a game, not in any promotional way. There's no script. There's no there's no actors or hosts to the show. It's simply just like an almost ASMR behind the scenes version mm. of going to a game. And what they do is they show the players coming in. They show the fans walking in. You just hear the sounds of of the of the chatter of the build up to the game and some of the chants. And then they're in the tunnel when the players are getting ready. They 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 get some of the whispers between what the players are talking about, and you really get this inside look at what what a match day experience is like. And since they started doing these videos, I have not found a single soccer club in the world that does that has not repeated this type of this type of video content. Mm. So there's there's a lot of things to talk about here in, in terms of the, this 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 video. So it hits the mark. It, this one specifically is about 15 minutes, but they've had some that are 20 to 25 minutes, so wow. it's longer. It's it's informative and it's um it, it is it is entertaining as well. So this one does have entertainment, but it's it's a deeper look where it's not a strictly entertainment based video. It has more informative about oh what are the players doing? How does it look from the ground level to be on watch the field, you know, what are they talking about? How do they prepare for the match? What are the sights and sounds of before the match? So it's really this experience that also built on the ASMR trend where, like we said, there's no sort of host that you're just listening to the sounds of what's going on in the game. And consistently, these videos for them are getting millions of views every time they post it. So you can see here, this one was posted a couple days ago and already had 666,000 views. So you can imagine that they're they're just raking in uh, money from from the, these YouTube videos, and and that's really why they're putting so much effort into them. And any t- and and these videos, by the way, have multiple ads within them. So there's the ad when it starts, then there's an ad like five minutes in. So it's right. almost becoming like a, it's almost reverting back to like TV where you're watching a thirty minute show and in between you had commercials, and and that's what's happening here. So 
I'll watch it. Is and it is it multi camera or is it one is it one camera that kind of goes throughout the whole experience? Like as a um, consumer of it, are you getting a bunch of different angles or kind of one uh, continuous angle? Yeah, it's 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 a couple of different cameras. They probably okay. have like two or three cameramen Great. who are set up at different spots throughout. You know, pre game, during the game, and post game to make sure they capture all the action and they kind of splice and dice it. And, you know, a, as a, as a fan, it's just incredible to watch because it's so raw and it's so authentic. And this is what I mean by they're not, they're not selling anything or they are selling something. They're selling the brand, but right. they're not directly selling it. They're giving right. you the experience of going to a game. They're telling you the story of each individual game without actually being there. And, and you can do this uh, through high production quality. And it, the, the results speak for themselves in terms of how many views they're getting. And I, I know for a fact that their, their marketing team, specifically for the content that, that they've been creating in the form of video, have won a few awards over the last uh, five years or so I've seen on LinkedIn. And it's just, uh, I, I get a lot of ideas, honestly, from, from this. We took this idea, this, uh, this, this is called Inside, uh, Inside Liverpool, and we we did it for our, our cannabis clients where we, mm. we literally just took our camera and we filmed for three to, to five hours inside their uh inside their their at their farm where they're growing the actual cannabis and because that is that is such cool information to people because it's been illegal for the longest time in america to do that and there's so many people who are interested in that industry so we said okay why, why don't we just do this inside and the inside Liverpool idea and do it with, with our, our cannabis clients. And we, we, we get there, we get the wide shot of the farm and then we go into the detail into the different rooms and see what the people are doing and just kind of behind the scenes, fly on the wall type of stuff. But it's so cool to be able to watch that. And it turns into an 11 minute long video and it shows them cutting the flower and then packaging it. And again, we're not directly promoting the brand. We're providing ed educational and informative information of what it's like to work at a cannabis farm but then then when they know which brand it's coming from it's like oh it's, it's from this brand so that's just a way that we've used you know to kind of bring it down okay liverpool fc huge global brand right i'm, I'm just like a small business based in michigan how am i going to do that well you, you can definitely do that and th there's way to ways to just tweak these things that these big brands are doing and that's working and, and doing it for for individual brands yeah this is a great it's a great example um yeah. and I, i'm looking i'm looking forward to checking it out i'll definitely post the links uh after the talk and i know that my dad who's a big liverpool fan will uh, also enjoy that <laughs> oh very cool i didn't know that that's yeah he will definitely enjoy it if he hasn't already watched them yeah all right then next we have the dr jordan peterson so he's a psychologist he has educational conversations with anybody and anyone around the world that that is uh an expert in anything that he finds interesting and again this just goes back to the whole ability to one how you can monetize on youtube if that makes sense for what you're trying to do but then if not how you can use this content to see what's performing well on on youtube so dr jordan peterson he's a psychologist who came to fame a couple of years ago through you know some videos that had, that had come up and what he had actually been doing is pretty much since the 90s back when he was doing it with a with a video recorder he's been recording his lectures he lectured for years at harvard and since then he's been at the university of, of toronto and he's done some one-off lectures at yale but he was recording all those things for the last 30 years now literally mm. little did he know that youtube was going to come come to fruition and be a thing but you know eventually he realized it and and he's such a good um, educator and psychologist that that now with YouTube he's able to reach people all around the world where before he he's having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with one of his uh, patients and now with through the power of YouTube he can have that conversation but what does it say here over two million people can see that conversation and they can see it whenever they want it's not your schedule at this time you can watch it in the morning evening whenever it works for you and now I'm, I'm talking a little bit about just the power of youtube in and of itself right but being when just how easy it is to have access to educational information and and for free that you would not have been able to do in, in past years it's just so incredible to be able to have access to these 
conversations and sort of expand your mind and share knowledge around that. So the reason I like Dr. Peterson's uh, example here is because it hits on a couple of different things. One, this is actually very low production. I know I talked about high production for YouTube. This is literally just him sitting just like the way that you and I are and having a conversation with someone else. In this specific video, he's having a conversation with Yonemi Park, who was who escaped from North Korea and, and wrote a book and told her story about it. And you can see here, it, it's very small, but this is a two hour and 11 minute long video. And it's it's just them talking like this. And for him, Obviously, it's great because he he loves having these conversations, but also it's a huge money maker because he has multiple ads throughout this video. He has two million plus views, and that's what he's doing as an individual content creator. So I, I think that that's just really powerful on on so many different levels. One, because people can become more educated through YouTube. Um, I, you you wrote in my <clears throat> or you mentioned in my bio that I, on the side I manage my own real estate. I right. learned everything I do through real estate through YouTube. I didn't have right. to pay pay anything. I didn't have to go to any <laughs> courses. It's just hours and hours of watching video. Yes, it's it's different than sitting in a class and getting an organized sort of uh, syllabus and chapter one, chapter two, chapter three. You kind of have to dig around and watch one version of one video, another version of that same topic, and so on until you get it. But ultimately, the education is there and it's free. And that's what people are looking for on YouTube. And people are not afraid to sit around and 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 look look watch long form content. And this is just a, a good example of it. And and you know the short videos and ads on YouTube are are not the way to go. So yeah, and I think for our, our entrepreneurs out there, um, our creative community, you know, these are the kind of tools and the resources that people can can utilize, right, to learn yep. about different subjects. Um, uh, you know, and, and to get understanding one thing that I'm always curious about, you know, as you were discovering about real estate, how were you able to vet what, uh, you know, who was legit and who wasn't in terms of just quality, uh, control? Well, it would, you could, it's almost like in a sense, when you're meeting someone in person, I right. would say there's a little bit of that where when you're watching a video, yes, it's video and it can be fabricated and people can act when they're in the video, but with YouTube, you, you can you can start to see once you watch a few videos who who is legit and and who's maybe maybe not as not as uh, a good of a thought leader in the subject. Right. And if they're consistently releasing content that is on the topic, excuse me. And if and if there if there's a lot of videos that they have and you find them helpful, and then you know maybe you watch one video and then you go and do what you learn from that video, and then it works. You you say okay, I'm gonna take the next step and watch more of this person's videos. And then there's a lot of people within communities that communicate, whether it's on real estate, whether it's on cannabis, whether it's psychology, whatever it is, you start to get to get to know who are all the big players on YouTube in the different sort of uh, industries. So right. that, that, that helps as well. <clears throat> all right. And then next, I believe we have the pizza show. Okay. So this is another one that I love, and I'm, I'm trying to give very different examples here. Right. But um, Munchies, Munchies is a is just a media company, and all they do is get is, is they create videos for YouTube that make money for them. Th that that's their whole monetization strategy. That's how they make money. So what they did here was they simply took a guy from. A, a pizza shop in in Brooklyn and they said hey we want you to go to other pizza shops in New York City and in the surrounding neighborhoods and just talk to the guys have a conversation eat some pizza we'll get some beautiful shots and boom we've got a video and that's what they had it's 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 amazing it's it's amazing of how simple they did something and how many views it's getting and what it's doing now for them because this video as you can see here, it was posted in January of 2017, up to close to 8 million views. That video is not going anywhere. That right. video is continuing to get views every single month, and it's bringing in an income for the people who created this video, for Munchies. And they're creating more videos. And by the way, it says on here, this is Season 1, Episode 5. So they did like eight episodes for Season 1. It's pretty much like, like, you, like you think about it for you know Netflix or any other streaming service. They did multiple episodes here. 
and th they went to New York, then they went to Chicago, then they started going to other cities that aren't really known for pizzas, but they just did it because people are going to watch it anyway. Top 10 pizzas in LA, top 10 pizzas in Seattle, and they even went to Rome and stuff like that. And then they expanded it to not even just doing pizzas. Now they did like the burger, burger ones, and now they're doing recipes. So what they're doing is they're just literally creating content that is informative because it is informative. He's actually going to some of the best places for pizza in New York. And he's talking to these people about their pizza making process. And then it's also educational, but primarily it's informative and, and um, educational and sorry, entertaining. It's also entertaining. Um, and, and the videos are, are, are long, as you can see here, it's about 24 minute video, um, close to 8 million views. So this is very raw. It's authentic. It's, it's not, and by the way, it's not promoting any one thing, but it is. It's not directly promoting it, but it's promoting his pizza shop because his pizza shop probably blew up after he started doing these videos because he's just exposed to so many people. And obviously all the pizza shops that he went to, you know, if I was one of the guys at these pizza shops that he came from, I would be asking him for a check every month, a portion of what he's getting right. every month from these videos because, <laughs> because you know, he just went in there and he said, hey, can I have a few hours of your time? And he filmed it and now everyone's watching it and they're paying him for it. Meanwhile, right. the guy, you know, yeah, he's getting some, he's getting business from it. I guess that's his, uh, that's his income from it. But so I have a question yeah. about that um, in terms of. Okay, you have a concept, uh, you have a brand that you want to push, you, you, you're going to start a season. You know, how, how does how does one, I mean, from, for them to shoot something, uh, you know, season one is episode five, I believe you said, and there's all, you know, and they have seven million views. Mm -hmm. Do you think that there was any strategic marketing to get them, get to get this video out so that people would actually watch it? Or did it go, was it a viral situation? Well, I, I definitely think that they promoted it in the sense that, in the sense, I think Munchies is connected to, to Vice, I believe. It's a, it's a spinoff company yep. of them. And so I'm sure that there were some articles, hey, check out the new show and things like that, or they posted it on their social media. But, it, you know, this came out in, in 2017. And, and that's at this point, that's, you know, five years ago. So right. this video has been building. And the more people that watch it, the higher it's going to end up in in youtube's algorithm and, and anytime someone searches pizza it's, it's going up. to come up high or if they search new york pizza or the original pizza or best right. pizza in new york things like that these videos are coming up and if they if this one doesn't then maybe their episode four or episode six and so on comes up and then when those videos come up they see episode the other episodes in there so it's um you know youtube that th that's the beauty of youtube you can actually post a video and it won't do anything for five years which is insane like you, you, I've seen, I've seen it with like data on some of these videos where they, they, they get maybe a thousand views over five years and then it catches on or it becomes relevant. And then there's like this hockey stick of mm. how many more views is getting and it's getting shared. And then it, then it's just a, a totally different sort of can of worms and, and monetization options from it. So, yeah. Yeah. It's, you know, <laughs> these, these are great, three great examples. Um, and it seems like, and we'll hear now, you know, I think next what, what Instagram kind of does and, and strategy behind yeah. that. But, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, being able to archive and build uh, some some content that you can grow from uh, that has a lot of potential for growth, it seems like YouTube is the place to be um, in terms of the long game. Uh, yeah, YouTube. I mean, if it makes sense for your brand, if your brand is large enough, if you have enough time and resources and if you have content to create mm -hmm. at the end of the day it all comes down to if you have the content to create because it's not going to be easy for every brand to perform on on youtube but if they can it it, it is not only good for promoting their products it subliminally but it's also a monetization platform uh, for for brands as as is instagram as well and we'll, we'll get into that next um so Instagram here, let's talk about some of the basics of Instagram. Short form content, less than 90 seconds. Shot vertical because we, we watch Instagram primarily on our phones. So I, I, I consider it bite size or quick consumption, primarily entertainment. Yes, there is some education on, on Instagram, but it's, it's hard to really educate people with 90 second clips. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and then it's raw and authentic. 
it, 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 you, anybody can do it from their phones at this point. Instagram has an editing tool. There's editing apps of how you can edit videos and then post it. You can be your own cameraman, videographer, actor, all of the things with just like a, a tripod. And I put monetization begins at five fifteen hundred. There's no hard and fast number here where, like there is on YouTube. On YouTube, it is actually once you get a thousand, they allow you to make money. With Instagram, I would say around fifteen hundred. If you are in an area and you start to have fifteen hundred followers, people will come to you and they'll pay you to create content, even if it's something small. Like for example, if you're a food blogger mm -hmm. and you you are you are in Chicago and you have fifteen hundred followers, a restaurant might come up to you and they'll pay you fifty dollars for a post. Um, and and you know you can start monetizing that way. So okay. Instagram is is just uh, t totally different than than YouTube. It's and Instagram is really just picking up on what where where TikTok left off in the sense that right now Instagram is like crazy promoting reels. So if you're posting reels, you're guaranteed views. You're guaranteed yeah. uh, because you're guaranteed views. You're guaranteed likes because they just want they want people to go away from TikTok and use the Instagram reels, which are the exact same thing. So right. if we, we go to the next slide here, just kind of what I talked about, low, low to medium production quality. You can shoot this with any, any iPhone or Samsung. Production cost can be even less than what, what's listed here. This is more so if you're asking someone to do it for you. And you can be your own cameraman and editor. And when it comes to reels, you know, we've seen huge, huge change in numbers from when we're posting a photo on Instagram versus when we're doing a reel for one of our clients. And I'm talking, you know, averaging 50 likes on a photo to, to averaging 250 to 300 likes on a Instagram reel. Yeah, and incredible. It, what a difference, huh? Huge, huge difference. And, yeah. you know, some of these things are just, it's about picking up on what the algorithm is doing and what the social platform is prioritizing. Because when I started in, in marketing in 2012, Facebook ads were so easy. I mean, my client was like, okay, here's a thousand dollars, do ads. And I'd get 10,000 new likes on their Facebook page every month. And, and I was, and I was a genius, but I really wasn't. I was just picking up on what, what the social platforms were pushing towards people. And I feel like we've hit on that now. Also, um, just in the beginning of this year, we switched, we switched our, our clients content where in the past we were doing eight to 10 photos and maybe one to two uh, short videos that were wide shot. Now we've totally switched it where we're doing six to seven, not wide shot, but vertical, like real mm -hmm. style videos that, right. that are primarily for your phone. So we're doing six to seven of those per month and, and maybe a few photos. And we're actually, actually even considering just doing away with photos altogether and just sticking to reels only and here and there doing photos if we absolutely need it and it doesn't make sense for a reel. Um, and, and that goes across all of our clients. That goes across our personal brand clients. That goes across our food clients. That goes across our cannabis clients, our real estate brand clients. You know, you name it, like everything. We're just focusing on reels, reels, reels when it comes to when it comes to Instagram. Yeah. So let's let's go, let's look at some some uh, or oh, the overview here. So brands should can use Instagram to create raw and authentic content as opposed to polished traditional ads. Again, just like YouTube, we don't do polished traditional ads on on Instagram or really any social media channel. The, that type of content is not going to perform well. And this is the hardest thing that we have to communicate to our clients. We do not. We, we, every time we create content, they have these ideas. Oh, well, what if we did this and added our brand in there? And we constantly have to push back, push back. Like, no, people will know it's your brand. There's literally your logo on there and it says your name on top of the video. They will know what brand it's coming from. We don't need to push it any harder into your, into your videos. <laughs> Everyone wants to put their colors and their logos. and <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Like we'll, we'll, we'll keep it on brand, right. but you don't need to say a million times, yeah, 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 you know, yeah. XYZ brand and here's, right. our, here's our model. Like, let's get away from that. Okay, people will know it's your brand, right. and if you want them to to engage with it, um, th then you got to give them something that is not just pushing your 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 product. And before we go into the examples, I wanna I wanna actually just give a good sort of line of thinking when you're creating content for for Instagram and how it works when you're trying to bring people into your business. So if you if if you think about it, someone's on their phone and they're scrolling, and suddenly they see. A, a content piece from brand X. Oh, oh what is that? Oh, okay, whatever. I'm just going to keep scrolling. I, I don't even know what it is. And you scroll. And then maybe a week and a half or two weeks later, if you're consistently creating content, which you should be doing, you see something else and say, like, oh, wait, I, I saw something from this brand before. Let me watch this. Oh, that's kind of cool. Okay. And then they keep scrolling. So now they've seen two pieces of content, one and a half, 
over, over the course of two weeks. Then maybe two or three weeks later, they're scrolling again and they see another piece of content. Oh, there's this brand again. This is cool. Let me check out their profile. Then they go to your profile and they see you have a ton of good content. Oh, this is cool. And they watch a few videos and then you hope that they follow you. So now it's been six weeks of you creating content and they've seen maybe two and a half of those content pieces and actually maybe more once they finally get to your page and hopefully they follow you. And then maybe two months after that, they've, they've been watching your content and they've liked a few here and there. And then finally three or four months after that, they come to a point where it's like, oh, I need to make a purchase decision about something in the category that your product or service is in. And only then are they like, oh, let, that, that one brand and you know, brand X, like, yeah, I've been meaning to get something from them. Let me get at that. So it's not like so, so many clients come to us and they say, okay, so we're going to do this video. And you know, what's our, what's our, what's our ROI going to be if we post this one video? And it's, mm. it's, it's, it's like, that's, that's not how it works. Like mm. your ROI is going to come down the line once you do content consistently for, a, for, for an extended period of time. Um, I can create one video and I, it'll give, it'll give you a, a spike in engagement and people following you, but it's, it's not going to suddenly, you're, gonna, you're not going to post a video about your, your pizza on a Friday and suddenly your business is going to increase by 20% that, that afternoon. We have to be posting pizza videos for four months just to start getting some people to try, to try coming in. And that's a great point. Um, and you know, in terms of just the consistency is so essential. Um, especially when using Instagram reels and, and putting out content, um, that you have to, you know, continually be knocking at the uh, consumer's door, um, yeah. for them to actually open in and, and walk in and, and investigate further. So uh, exactly, it, that's a great point. Yeah. There's just so many things that are distracting us now that you have to be front of mind for a, a, a good period of time so that the next time someone your your potential customer thinks about a purchase decision of whatever product or service you're you're providing that they were they they know about you okay so here's a, here's a few examples on instagram dr mark hyman he's he's an individual he talks all about health and wellness mm -hmm. i really like his content he's doing a lot of reels and just a a really good example of how to be a thought leader in an industry and his content is a little more polished just because he has a team and he has so many followers at this point i think he's over a couple of million and you know he's getting eleven thousand likes on on his reels which is in incredible for him but it's just a it's just a simple example of how you you can talk about things that are relevant to your industry as opposed to specific to your product and and become a thought leader in that industry. So again, when it comes to the audience that may be listening to this, in the entrepreneurial community, there's a lot of people working on their own. This is how you can go about that, it's about talking things that are going on in your industry to really start to build a following and create a thought leadership around it. And then behind that, you obviously have a brand or a product or a service, just like he does. His brand or product or service is his, uh, he, he has a practice for, uh, uh, a medical practice, I think, in Massachusetts, and over the last years that he's been creating content, he he doesn't promote his practice directly. He talks about things in the medical industry, and then through that, he gets business there. Right. Meanwhile, he also now gets paid through Instagram for talking about it because at this point, Instagram is literally paying people who are who have over a hundred thousand. Or so followers to create reels because they that's how badly they want people off of TikTok. So they're incentivizing content creators to create content so that there's just a ton of content on Instagram and they're not creating it on TikTok and people wow. so people use TikTok less. So Dr. Mark Hyman's a good one. Um, next we have on, on the list here Charlotte P Parler. Again, she's the dermatology. I'm trying to show a couple of different mm -hmm. uh, examples. Similarly here, she has products that she she is creating and promoting, but what does she do? She talks about dermatology. She shows examples. She tests out other products. She writes a novel in her post here, which is, <laughs> which is amazing. That is so amazing. And I think I have another example either right after this. I think the next one, if you go to it, yeah. is, a, is, a psych, is a psychologist, a Dr. Nicole. She also writes a novel in her post. And I really want to hit on this because it's so That's important. I can't tell you how many times over the last 10 years people have said to me, well, no, our content needs to be quick and to the point and people won't read long, long things on, on social media. That couldn't be farther from the truth. Mm. 
that it, at the end of the day, it all comes down to the content that you're creating. If you're promoting your product and you're pushing it down people's throats and, and, and you're talking about it forever, it's, it's not going to perform. But if you are providing valuable educational information and entertaining information to people, it doesn't matter how crappy it is. This is, this is just text on a screen. Anybody can do this. But what she did is she thought about what's going to be the most important thing to put here. And then she went on to write, I, I joke about it. I say it's a novel, but it's amazing because I will sit here and read it and other people will too. I mean, this has 23,000 likes as, right. as, and it's just an image. And people like this, this type of stuff because it means something to them. It's giving them value to improve their own lives. So when you're creating content for social media, you need to think about that. What am I creating that's going to improve the lives of, of the people who are consuming it? And then second to that, they will, you can find a way to get them to pay you by purchasing your product or your service. Yeah. And, and I, I would yeah. say too that, you know, so many people say when you post an Instagram, make it short. You know, don't post uh, text, you know, make mm -hmm. sure it's a picture like, you, you know, and what you're saying right now is like, no, that's not necessarily true. Like you have to figure out what works for your product. But, you know, that these these people have been successful and they're doing all of that, <laughs> you know? Yeah, exactly. That's that's exactly correct. It, it just it just comes down to if uh, is what you're posting the content that you're creating valuable and informative mm -hmm. because if it is people will like it doesn't matter if it's a reel doesn't matter if it's a uh, a post with just text on it doesn't matter if your caption is five paragraphs long and I, that's why i really wanted to to showcase this one because it, it's it's every time someone says that to me I, I pull up and and by the way i have so many other examples of where it's just text on an image it, there, there's an account that that just posts uh, one page long book book uh, pages mm -hmm. of text, mm -hmm. and it, that's the image. And it, it has millions of followers. It's making a ton of money, and it it just goes back to is the content that you're posting valuable and and creative. So, this is great. I'm learning so much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I, I've been I've been in the industry for ten years, and yeah. for so many years, you know, as uh, on the agency side. You know your clients are paying you, right? And and they're directing you in in ways that they think that they know and things that they hear and these generalizations of, right. well, we need to push our product or it needs to be short and quick or uh, our our logo is not big enough in there. And for so many years, I didn't have anything to say back to it, and I would just get so frustrated because I would say, okay, well, we're doing what they're saying; it's not performing well. And over the last few years, I've really taken a look at what are other brands and individuals doing on social media that's performing well. And it's just given me so much confidence so that now when I talk to my clients and they say things that I, I know are wrong, it's I can explain to them and give them examples of, hey, here's what actually works. And <laughs> you would you would think that they're uh, they would listen to that, but they still sometimes <laughs> push back. So right, um, right. Well yeah. and I also think you know using social media as a marketing tool can be very overwhelming. Um, there are so many different options uh, and and just watching what pe different people put out, you know, where to start, you know, is always kind of the question. But I, what what I'm what I'm hearing from you is that there are many different ways to push out content. Mm -hmm. Obviously, from what you said, consistency is key no matter what kind of content you're pushing out. Um, but that you don't just have to adhere to the, hey, throw a couple words up, you know, a couple hashtags, make sure it's a picture and you're, yeah. you'll be good to go. Um, you know, and, and I think that this is really relevant and important information. So this has been great. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And, and the last one I just wanted to show here is I get back to Dr. Jordan, P Jordan Peterson. This is, I, I wanted to show this example because it's a great example of how to use platforms differently. So we showed mm -hmm. Dr. Peterson's conversation with Yonemi Park on YouTube, two and a half hour long, two hours, 11 long minute video, millions of views mm -hmm. that works for YouTube wide shot. How do you take that content and then post it on Instagram? This is what he does every time. He takes a 90 second clip from those long videos. He, he takes the golden, one of the golden nuggets from it, you know, a really good piece that is informative. It's almost like a highlight from that long video, posts it on Instagram in real style. So vertical, and then just says on my, from my latest podcast link in my bio to watch the, watch the full one. So now he's got 388,000 views here so he's getting paid for this reel on instagram 
Meanwhile, he's taken his millions of audience that he has on Instagram, sending them to YouTube. Now he's get, getting double the money because they're also watching the ads there. And that's how you use two different audiences to elevate each different platform and continue building one off the other. So this one was just kind of like a uh, to wrap it all together to on how you can use them if you have the content to use both Instagram and YouTube and how you can push people from one platform to another and vice versa. Yeah, which is which is great. You know, it it's the idea of how to take one piece of content and stretch it out. Yeah, uh, and make it work for you. Yeah, um, I mean, you can imagine. You think he shoots this separately, like he has a phone or a vert, or he just edits it in a software so it it's vertical. No, th this is th this is just a clip from the video. Right. It, he has a video editor that just takes the two hour long, two, hour, two hour long conversation, and I'm sure he can create multiple short videos out of that right. like this, and then they just post them to to, to his social media. So with that being said, you know, you asked about, you asked about, um, how do you, how do you group these things and, and what do you do? So what we, we like to do is create content buckets, <coughs> excuse me, we create content buckets. So, um, I can't remember if I have a slide on here for examples. Um, but yeah, let's, let's take a restaurant for example. So this will help you to understand what type of different content you're creating. So if you're a restaurant, you definitely want to be on Instagram. You definitely want to be doing Instagram reels. Very easy. Here's just like the different buckets you can do. You, know, you, have, you have your menu items. So each day you can feature different menu items and create a reel about it. You can take, take a video easily with your phone, some close up shots of it or shots of it being made. Instagram has music that you can put in the back. Very easy. Then you can do specials whenever you have specials, whether it's cocktail specials or uh, special discounts or whether you have a band playing, whatever it is, again, videos on that, that's, that, that's, that's a certain, that's one bucket. Then you've got your employee features. You want to talk about who's working there, ask them questions about their favorite menu items. What do they do outside of work? Just again, creating a brand and a story to your actual product or service, maybe the history of your, of your restaurant. And of course, if there's any national holidays that, that you're doing special events for. So, Buckets are, are how we organize a, a lot of this content. And this is just one quick example for a yeah. restaurant. But you know, you, you, you can do this for any sort of brand or, or product or, or service and just switch these things out. And this then gives you a framework to work within where you can say, okay, it's, uh, it's, it's April 19th right now. We have May coming up. Let's make a plan for what do we got going on in May? What are some national holidays that are, that are going on? Well, who, which employees do we want to feature? What are the specials that we have going on in May? And which menu items are we going to feature? And then you can start to create content around that and then schedule it out so that it's all done ahead of time and you're not you know, walking in every day saying, okay, what are we going to film today? You try to do it ahead of time and then you post that on, on social media and that way you have a, um, I don't want to say effortless, you have a uh, organized marketing, uh, marketing agenda of what you're promoting. Yeah, that's great. And at the end of the day, it all just comes down to the topics that that we choose to to talk about. It's not about the brand. It's not about um, pushing specific promotional items. You need to tell. It's it's such a cliche, and I, I haven't figured out how to how to change the <laughs> language. But you need to tell some sort of story that's going right. to in, in, entertain, educate, and inform people about how how your product or service can benefit them. So. That's it at a high level on, on how to build brands. Well, that, that was fantastic. You know, I, uh, what a, what a great conversation and, um, really useful tools for people to think about when strategizing and using YouTube, um, using Instagram reels, you know, some different thoughts, right. Than than what people typically think in terms of ways to use Instagram things I, I i thought that you don't do right you don't post text you don't yeah. you know kind of these things that you're saying no no that's not that's not necessarily true um well you know thank you so much for taking the time to to talk with me today and to share with us you know your experience um you know obviously you know you've had a, a tremendous amount of experience um i'm gonna put below uh, check out ideabooth.com dash um the, the the link is below uh, Mian is, you know, 
has been great to talk to and learn from. Um, we'll be posting these videos up. We'll probably break them break them up, as you've talked about, and use some of the content uh, to put in the Instagram rules and, and actually apply some of the things that you've said um, you know, with, with sharing this content to help and educate people, um, and, and empowering their, 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 you know, their, their, their ability to market themselves, right? You know, people who are entrepreneurs, um, have to first be self-sufficient and as they can grow, maybe they can hire great companies like yours, um, to work with, but to start out here, some, here are some basic tools. So again, thank you. Yeah, no, thank you for, for giving me the opportunity to talk on this, this platform to everybody. And, I'm open to any additional questions that anybody or any, any individuals might have to just have conversations similar to this to help you get on your feet when it comes to creating content. So thanks for that, Daniel. Thank you. All right, everyone. Uh, what a, an incredible workshop with me on Vukovic from Idea Booth. Um, obviously, tremendous amount of experience. Uh, you know, field experience in developing social media marketing tools to use, concepts to think about, um, ideas, how to get organized. Like there's, there's so much in here. I, I'm looking forward to watching it over again um, and, and kind of picking out some of these nuggets that he talked about. Again, you're listening to um, our new uh, series, Movement and Marketing, a conversational series that looks at the action strategies and tools companies and entrepreneurs can utilize to help them achieve their uh, business goals. Um, Stick around for us next week, or not next week, huh? next month. We're doing the three questions you need to answer to develop your marketing strategy with Dakota Schultz. Um, go to cceglobal.org, register for the, our free workshops offered by our partners and ourselves. Find us on Instagram and Facebook. Um, you know, like us and and, and definitely uh, engage with you know things that you've enjoyed that we've put out, um, or things that you're curious about uh, that you want us to cover in some of our workshops. Wishing everyone a great rest of their day, um, and we will talk to you soon. Take care.